Do these three practice tasks to train for being a VA. Welcome back to the channel where I talk tips, tools, and tutorials for virtual assistants. And this video is different because this time I'm giving you homework. If you're a new VA or an aspiring VA and you've never done admin type work or you're not really sure what kind of typical tasks clients ask for, this video is going to help you get some training on some of the more popular tasks that clients tend to ask for. Here's how I want you to do this. I'm going to give you a prompt. You are going to pause the video and actually do the task that I'm assigning you. Then when you're done, you're gonna hit play and I'm gonna show you how I presented the task. So we're basically comparing our work. I don't want you to just watch this video because if you just watch me do it and don't actually try to do it, when I present to you my results, you're gonna be like, oh yeah, I would have done that too. But would you have? You don't really know what you're capable of or what your thought process is until you actually try to do the task. So please don't fight me on this one. Don't just watch this video until the end. Actually pause it and do the tasks. Okay guys, so I'm your client and here comes tasks number one. I want you to arrange a call for me next week with three people. Two are in Los Angeles, one is in Paris. I live in New York City. Find a time that works for all of us. All right, guys, so how would you handle this? You have different time zones, you have to set up a meeting and ready and go. I'm curious to see how you've handled this one. I'll show you briefly how I would do this for a client. Number one, you probably wanna get a handle on the different time zones. So I have a tool that I like to use called World Time Buddy. World Time Buddy allows you to enter multiple different time zones so that you can visually get a comparison of times across the globe. So here's what I'll do first. I'll do my client's placement. I'm in New York. I also know I need to get somebody in Los Angeles and we need to include somebody in Paris. So we're working across three different time zones here. Paris and Los Angeles being eight hours apart. That's the biggest one that we really have to pay attention to. So what I would do now that I have a general sense of the times and the time differences between the zones, I would go to my calendar. And I'm gonna pretend like these purple events are meetings that are already booked that I have to work around. Always give options to people based around my client's availability because my client is my priority. I don't wanna double book them, obviously. So what I could do is Monday is wide open. That's pretty obvious. Tuesday, it looks like they've got availability. I'm just gonna say after. Oh, in the morning. Um, I know because of Paris, again, that if I suggest something too late, it might not work for them. So morning on Tuesday, morning on Wednesday, morning on Thursday. Okay, fortunately, my client's pretty open. Then I go to my email. Here's how I would word it. I'd say, hello. I will address the people in LA. I will address the person in Paris, and then I will include my client to BCC. Here's a quick caveat. When I write to people, when I write emails to people like this, I always include in the uh, recipients, the two is the people I'm arranging a meeting with. I always include my client in the BCC field. When these people that you're arranging a meeting with write back to you, the BCC person falls off the chain. The reason I move my client to BCC is because they don't need to be involved in the back and forth while we find a time that works for everyone. All right, so once I've got this address to the people and I've moved my client to BCC, I'll say something like, please let me know if any of the following times work for you for a call. And then I just simply bullet point it out. So I'll say Monday, I would include the specific date that you're doing this. Anytime between 8 a.m. to... 10 a.m. PST, and then I would put, because we are doing time zones across the world, and I like to be empathetic to people, uh, in, in especially abroad, so I would do a slash, and then we come back to World Time Buddy, and we're like, oh, 8 a.m. is 4 p.m. in Paris, and their moniker for time zones is CET, so I'd come back and say, that's 4 p.m. to 7 p.m. CET. I like to typically offer three times, but I just want to show you what this looks like. Then I like to close my emails with this. I will send a Zoom link once we land on a time. Uh, I like to include that little piece of information because oftentimes if I don't, recipients of the email are like, should I send a Zoom link or can you send this? Um, something I want to show you before we move to task number two is that if you are working with, um, let's say more than three people, three people is pretty simple. If you're trying to get a meeting set for like, five, 10, 15 different people, 
Having an email that just lists out time is super ineffective. Um, and that's because you'll have way too many back and forth emails. So go to this tool called Doodle. It's completely free. It's called creating a Doodle poll. Doodle's very simple. What you do is you'll actually just select times that work for your client right here on the website. And when you create the link and send it to these 10 or 15 people, when they get that link, they'll click on it, they'll open the poll, and then they'll be able to physically click on the times that work for them. And the reason I like Doodle Poll is because it's visual. It creates a really easy indication where you just see point blank, like these 10 people are available all at this time. So that's the time you wanna choose. Okay, so how'd you guys do? Okay, task number two. Find me a romantic dinner spot in Salt Lake City, Utah for this Saturday night. It's an anniversary, so it's a special occasion. We like seafood, we like meat. The only thing I need is I need for it to have great views and it needs to be four stars. I'm really trying to impress on this date. Can you give me some recommendations and go? Task number two is a little more nuanced because um, romantic dates, that's open to interpretation for sure. So what is romantic to you might not be a romantic to your client. So it might be a good time to ask, what does that mean to them? Is romantic, is it in terms of like low lighting, intimate feel? Is it a view on the water? Is it a view of the mountains? So the thing is, without being an annoying virtual assistant, you don't wanna ask your client 40,000 follow-up questions. They want you to make some assumptions and then offer them a variety of details. So since we don't necessarily know what romantic looks like to them, we're going to offer three kind of distinct different options to see what fits their personality. So here's the first thing you'll wanna do. So the first thing I'm gonna do is, ro is Google romantic dinners in Salt Lake City. It does not get more simple than that. Google will kind of aggregate some of these um, options here. So we can see it's already pulled up fine dining, steakhouse and wine bar. All right, so Google's gonna help us uh, with a couple options. Um, blogs are also gonna help you with options. Here's this blog of the top 10 romantic, most romantic cities. TripAdvisor is gonna be a good one. The 10 best, all these websites are going to be helpful to you. And what you'll need to do as a VA is just look through these sites and see if you can get a sense for what these restaurants look like or what they're offering. So you'll get a good sense even just looking at these photos. Um, let's say you come across one that you think looks romantic or you're like, wow, the food at Log Heaven looks really good. So what you would probably do is Google search Log Heaven in Salt Lake City. Okay, I'm liking this one already as one option. One of the stipulations from our client was that it had to be a four-star restaurant. It also in the description says romantic destination in a log mansion, and it looks like it's on a river. So I'm for that reason alone, I'm liking all of these options. If we click on Google, we can actually click through some of these photos. I can imagine this being a storybook view from the diner's perspective. So I'm liking everything that I'm seeing. So what is our next logical step? And you might be thinking, just email your client that this is one of the options but you would be remiss. We're actually missing a very important step and that's to see if they have availability on this coming Saturday. Can't tell you how many restaurants I've recommended and then you, you find out that they actually, oops, don't have a table and you have to offer new restaurants. So clients don't like that back and forth. What you would either do is call uh, the restaurant. In my current time zone, they aren't even open yet. So the second thing I would do is go to the website and go to make a reservation. It looks like I can click on this open table I need a dinner for two people on Saturday, and let's just see if anything's available. Luckily for us, there's an eight o'clock dinner. So I would do this two more times. I would go back and repeat the process of looking through blogs, doing some Googling, seeing if I'm finding other recommendations that fit the bill. And then ultimately I would send them an email with my recommendations. And here's how my email would look. I always start off with a simple sentence that just reminds them of what they asked me to do. Because uh, again, clients are busy people. Sometimes they need that reminder or they forgot that they asked you for something. So, hey, here's some great options for a dinner on Saturday night. Let me know what you think. It can be as simple as that. And then I actually include the restaurant name and I've hyperlinked it right to the website. So if your client clicks on this, they're gonna go right to the dinner website. I'm gonna give them a brief overview of the expensiveness, so number of stars. I'm gonna include how many good reviews it's gotten. 
And I'm going to include the table time as well as one sentence about what this is and why I picked it. I would do this for two more restaurants and then I would send the email as is. So it's simple, it's concise, but it includes all the relevant information that your client needs. All right, so tell me in the comments, how'd you guys do on task number two? Task number three, it's a doozy. I need to fly from Los Angeles to New York City this Friday. Then I need to go back home this Sunday. I need you to recommend some flights for me that are reasonable flight times. I don't want to leave at 6 a.m. and I don't want to arrive after midnight. So find me some reasonable flight times. Price doesn't matter. Airline, it doesn't matter. Any airline will do. On top of the flights, I need you to find me a hotel in Brooklyn, New York that's close to the water and is less than $250 a night. Good luck. The first thing I would do is I would start with flights. So we know we're going from Los Angeles to New York on a nonstop flight, and we're pretty open in terms of prices and times and, um, and even airlines. So that tells me that I can use a site aggregator. What that means is instead of going right to a website like United or Delta or whatever, you can go to an aggregator site, which pulls lots of different options in one place. So I'm going to kayak.com and I'm looking at their flights. We know we need a round trip. Client didn't specify economy or first class, but as you get to know your clients, you'll get to better understand their preferences for things like seating, window, aisle, um, airfare class, that's economy, premium, first class, etc. We're just going to keep it simple. We're going from Los Angeles and I'm going to put New York as general, as a general thing, because um, New York has three different airports. So I'm going to click that. I want all of these airports because I just want to figure out what the best nonstop option for them is. And then they said they're going this Friday with a return on Sunday. So let's go ahead and search what this looks like. Now, one of the reasons I like Kayak so much is because they aggregate in a very easy to read and visual way. Um, where, you know, I could present options by the cheapest option to my client or the quickest route or, or even the best option, which kind of compares the two. And just so I can keep this task moving along, I'm going to say that this flight looks doable. Uh, I think the times are fine. So I'm going to present this United round trip option as one of the options for my clients. Now, in the days that I started as a VA, I used to actually painstakingly write all these options out, like type them out in email. I realized that a faster way that actually works for everyone, myself and my clients included, is to simply take a screenshot and then I drag and drop the option right into my email so that they can see the options just as visually as I can. And I like to offer at least three options. So just like everything else, um, three tends to be the magic number. Anything more than three, I think, overwhelms clients. Anything less than three, they usually want to see more options. Now we have flights squared away, but now we also need to handle hotels. So how do we do that? You can use an aggregator again. An aggregator like Kayak or like Hotels.com um, is handy because, again, it pulls a lot of different details from a lot of different places. So I'm going to type in Brooklyn, New York. We're going for the same dates, check in on Friday, check out on Sunday. We want one room and we're going to update this. Now, the thing is, we have a couple things that we need to finesse with. We know that we have a price parameter of less than $250 a night. So I'm going to toggle this down, see what the options are. And instead of looking at this um, like a list, because if you are unfamiliar with a city, that can be a little overwhelming. What I like to do is look at the map option and we can zoom in. Whoops. Whoop too much. We can zoom in on Brooklyn specific stays. We know our clients said the closer to the water, the better. So right here, we'll see there's a Hampton Inn in Brooklyn that's available. It's not too far from the water, but it is under budget, um, as well as this cheaper option, Motor Inn, two star. I am not, look at this, 5.4 is fair ratings. I am not offering that to my client. I like to make, you know, good is good. I like to offer my clients stays that fit within their parameters that are going to be comfortable. And it wouldn't be this one either because that one's just okay. And that one is poor ratings. So, yay, yeah, yay, yeah. Brooklyn, what's happening with you guys? Okay, so I might offer two options for them. Uh, my option number one would be this one. <laughs> what I would do here is I would highlight the name of this hotel, copy and paste so that once again, I can 
go back to my email and say, you know, hotel options, option one. I'm going to include the name and then it's the same thing as the restaurant. I'm going to go to the website. I'm going to copy the website. We're going to hyperlink that right here. And we're going to include some quick notes about the reviews. We're going to include notes about, you know, King Room is 222 before tax. We always want to make sure we're including all the details about prices. So we just want to include as much as we can so that there's less back and forth for the client. With any luck, they'll like some of the options that you're sending to them and they'll say, go ahead and book it for me. At that point, as a VA, you will book the travel. So you have to have travel details from your client's behalf, things like their date of birth, any frequent flyer numbers that they have, credit cards. But you will book everything on your client's behalf using their details. And then the final step is to add those details to their calendar. So how would you guys do in number three? I know this was a long video. Hope you guys actually tried all these tasks. These three things are seriously the most frequently asked for tasks. So if you can nail down things like travel, suggesting recommendations, making reservations, and booking times on people's calendars, you are already ahead of the curve. So hopefully this video was helpful. If you want to see more training like this, let me know. I've never done something like this before. And if this was helpful, leave me a comment, give it a share. The more you can share this video, the more it will help other VAs who are new and perhaps don't have a good sense of maybe how to do some of these tasks yet. Woo, that was a doozy. I'm exhausted. Thank you guys for joining me on this week's video and I will see you on the next one.